Yo, what is going on, people? Welcome to Throwdown, episode 443. I'm your host, Tony Polanco, and tonight I'm joined by Emilio Lopez. Sup, people? How's it going? Chris Seeley. Hey, what's up, everyone? Carlos Romero. Yo, yo, yo. Brett Murdoch. What up? And joining us by special request, man, Mr. Richard Bailey Jr. Good evening, everybody. All right, we're all right. By the way, people, we're also going to have our boy, Mr. Otaku Man 5000, Andre Tipton, on. Uh, he is driving back home, so he'll just join us when he joins us. Hold on, we haven't even started the show. Mop hits already raining those bits on us, man. Let's go. Good stuff, man. Thank shout you for that. Shout out to my Yes, always, man. So shout out to the Throwdown uh, fam. Um, and by the way, update on Brian. So he, you know, everything's kind of, you know, getting settled in. I think he has to do some more painting or something on his house. But he said he will probably join us again at the end of July. So that that's pretty close, actually. I think we're like halfway through July. So we will be hearing oh, yeah. um, Brian's dulcet tones very soon, you know. Br br yeah, bring, some, bring some class to this fucking podcast you know yeah maybe 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 by the time maybe by the time he joins the show all this bullshit will be done with and we can actually start talking about fun shit yeah mm -hmm. um, and, and i think we need to uh, address the elephant in the room I, i'm I, i'm just gonna say it man um adam will actually not be joining us until this is over he's tired of it uh I, I don't disagree with him when he says that things have become way too toxic. And now it seems things have become too political when it comes to the ST, FTC stuff. So he is not going to be on throwdown until this is over. I know that's going to upset some of you guys because, you know, despite what Adam may think, a lot of you guys actually like hearing Adam's opinion. People were asking, oh, is Adam going to be on? Going to be on? Um, so yeah. that that's kind of upsetting that Adam feels away, but I'm not going to force him. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's how it is. And I... I sympathize with his position, you know, it, this is getting ugly and I, I've made it very clear. I'm very upset that this fucking story has taken over all of gaming. We're actually getting good video games now and we can't talk about these things because of this goddamn mm -hmm. trial, you know, um, but at the same time, this is what you guys want us to talk about, so we're going to talk about it. We, we, we can't ignore the biggest, like I've always said, throw down. You could literally have another 9-11 happen and we'll ignore it because we're talking about games. But this is the main thing of gaming. We can't ignore that uh, despite how some of us would wish for this fucking thing to end. Because it is just, un un it's annoying. It's annoying as fuck, you know. Uh, I'm very upset this is going on. Very upset at the fucking FTC for not knowing how to take a fucking L, you know. It's like we want this thing to be over. It was, we saw the light, man. We saw the light. We saw the light. We're like, yeah, we're finally free. Give us us free, like Amistad, right? Nope. Nope. We're going to appeal. We're going to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals because we hate you. And we're going to drag this shit out to make you suffer, you pieces of shit. You know, that, that's the way I feel about the FTC, you know, is it, like dogging on us right now. I'm very upset. We got to keep talking about this nonsense, you know, but there it is. Let's get into it, man. Um, Brett, I'm going to jump into you because, like, a because you and Adam are the most informed guys about this because you're the only ones that really give a shit about this thing, you know, but now uh, you're like the only man to talk about this. And I'm very grateful that you're here to, to tell us what's going on, because I'll be honest, I was so busy this week with Prime Day and fucking Apple stuff that I don't know what the hell's going on. All I know is that fucking FTC decided not to take an L and this fucking con woman is getting just destroyed, probably rightfully so, you know, in, in on fucking Congress and shit. So. What is going on right now, man, Brett? Oh, man. Lots of, lots and lots, lots of stuff. Um, you know, I, I, I can kind of relate to Adam. It's it's one of those things like we're actually kind of in the middle of it where I, I think Adam's a little bit more pro than than I am. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, well, hold on, Brett. I got to stop you. Is this true? Bob Hitt says that, the, that this has been over for a few hours that the judge denied the appeal. Is this true? Oh, good. Good. I hope it's over. I hope it's Thank over. Thank fucking God. It's, Good. You know, Let me go check it's, Tom Warren's. Yeah, go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go take Chop Warren. Yo, by the way, real quick, Tom Warren, shout out to that brother, man. He has been really on top of this stuff, you know? Um, anyway, go, go ahead, oh, Brett. Go ahead. 
Be, sorry, Brett. I'm, I need to yeah. interject just to clarify, just to confirm. Yep, Tom Warren two hours ago uh, tweeted out a uh, court the the judge's order. Uh, as expected, Judge Corley has denied the FTC's motion to stay uh, to stay her own PI order. Uh, I'm expecting we'll hear something from the Ninth Circuit tomorrow. Ah, the Ninth Circuit. But I- this whole is ridiculous. Like. The FTC clearly went into this with bias from the beginning. Yeah. And I said this back when it happened. Like, this is just have this, like, hate boner for Microsoft. And listen, I don't have a dog in this race. Like, we said, like, yeah. Arlos has pointed out, I don't care. I didn't care if Microsoft got this or not. This is just getting ridiculous. Either give it to them or don't give it to them. But this fight, this the argumentation, the judge even said that they don't have any standing in this because. What they presented doesn't prove any anti-competitive behavior, so we gotta let it go. You lost. You lost. And you it's ridi- what you're spending our money to fight Microsoft buying Activision right now. That's what people should be mad at. Who do you think is paying for these? Yeah, these, us. These we are paying for this bullshit. Yeah. You know. And, and Chris, okay, I don't know how how much you know about this con woman, but. I've been told that apparently she's like an ideologue and stuff, and you know those fucking people don't know how to let anything go, you know? Yeah, exactly. Like now, now it's like she's doubling down on trying to break this this deal, and it's like, listen, I where where were you when when uh, you know Disney was eating uh, another yeah. major uh, movie studio? Like they didn't just buy up. You know, Marvel and, and Lucasfilm before that, you let them eat 20th Century Fox. I didn't hear anybody complain. I didn't see you file any motion to, mm-hmm. it's like, hey, wow, that's it's kind of anti competitive, this monopoly. Nothing. No, nothing, yeah. You know, all these acquisitions ha- happen in, in tech, gaming, whatever, nothing. Microsoft buys companies all the time, uh, crickets. All of a sudden, they buy Activision, all of a sudden, it's like, no, 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 this is a bridge too far. Really? What what is it about this? This isn't even like technology, like uh, OpenAI or another company. This is like video games. Yeah. What and uh, uh, what specifically about this is a bridge too far? Where it's like not just anti-competitive. It's gonna set set off all these antitrust alarms for you that nothing else <laughs> that's happened that everybody's like, whoa, shit. Disney is like bigger than ever or whatever. You know, all all these. Th- uh, things around Google's buying up companies. Look at the Google graveyard of all the oh things they purchased, yeah. tried to repurpose and and failed, and then shut it down. You know, and so it's like ridiculous. It's, it's fucking nuts. Anyway, Brett, I'm sorry. Go on, man. So oh, it's it's cool. Uh, I'm trying to even think of like where where to, where to fucking start, honestly. Because um, like you all bring up really good points and. This is obviously, like I was telling Adam earlier today, like, this is somebody who's clearly trying to make a career, right? Like, this isn't about the the, the issue at hand. It's, it's like, you know, as Tony said, it's, it's an ideologue. And I don't have a problem with ideologues necessarily. It's just in certain situations like this where, like, you've got an agenda that is not lining up and you're not fucking letting it go They're like a dog with a bone and and I, I i i kind of think that's a lot of what this was right like she she got into the ftc head chair she wanted to do big things she wasn't a big fan of corporations and again i understand that and i understand that different people are wearing the same hat this isn't a monolith but like you can't just hard shift from previous directions that you were taking as as an organization right so uh, you know like chris said like you didn't say anything when when disney was gobbling anything up you didn't say anything when the telecommunications industry went to fucking like that is the most corrupt industry i have fucking ever seen the people who who give you your cable and your internet are just fucking with you most of the time they have agreements not to fight with other people not to not to the they've designated certain areas if you want to talk about non-compete that's the reason that our uh our our telecommunication as a country is far behind the rest of the world places that are way less developed than we are have way better internet and it's because of all these anti-competitive practices like you want to see if you really want to get in there and dig in for corruption it's fucking there but it's not this high profile flashy case about a fucking video game. Right? Like that's that that's not what it is. So the fact that you just keep pursuing this is yeah, it, it's just telling of ulterior motives. 
and we can sit here all day and like kind of guess like, well, man, you know, maybe it's her morals, maybe it's her ethics, maybe she's trying to you know push her own career, maybe she you know has alliances or or talks with somebody or you know knows this person, blah 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 blah. There's so much fucking going on, but I think what it really boils down to is this was a stupid case pushed by somebody with an ulterior uh, mm-hmm. with ulterior motives. And I think everybody can kind of agree with that at this point, right? Like, but that's so like that's the label, that's the sticker. We close that kind of box and 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 put it that way, and and that's for the case. Now, there's a there's a whole bunch of shit surrounding the case, and that's this giant fucking shit sandwich that is Twitter and everybody talking and public opinion. That aside, the case itself, I think we can agree was ill-founded, it didn't make sense, they were unprepared, and it was brought by people who were clearly worried about something other than the thing that they presented. Whether or not you agree with that thing, I think that these are all basic facts that we can agree on. And I think we all really need to listen to that real fucking hard. Because like some people here seem to be just wanting to deny reality, and it's it's... It's just, it's, it's weird. Like, I understand you may agree with them, but you can't say that this was a good argument, even with you, if you agree with that weird ulterior motive, right? Like, you could, it's, I don't even have a good allegory. It's just fucking stupid. Like, I can't think of a good metaphor of an equal s- scenario that, that even makes sense because it, this is honestly, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. You're, you're, you're arguing the side point. And you have other people agreeing with this side. You know, it's, it's 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 kind of honestly, it's kind of like a fucking witch trial from Monty Python, man. Like it's it's obvious, but everybody's kind of caught up in this this thing, and they have their own agenda, so they're just kind of going with this flow of like, oh, they're going to eat up everybody. And I guess that there are a few people who are legitimately concerned about it, but like, look, Microsoft has had the opportunity to buy a bunch of other companies. It's passed. It, it seems like it's kind of done with its big goblin phase. We went through this with EA. I don't think that they're going to go and just buy out the whole industry, right? Like that's that's not really conducive for them. And I think I think Sony is is fully capable of being competitive and surviving in an industry that they've dominated in for twenty years. So I think we're all going to be fucking okay. Oh, I will disagree with one one of your points, Brett. Uh, Microsoft is not done. As a Microsoft, <laughs> for, Microsoft for the most part, for the most part, for the I, most I, part this year probably. But you know, after this year, all you know, all hands on deck because that's that's just that's just what Microsoft does. I mean, kind of understand, but like, here's here's the thing. Like, I think everybody is looking at the 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 facts, and I think that's great. But I don't think enough people are kind of asking why. Like, if we look at the situation. Five years ago, everybody was screaming at Microsoft to get some fucking games on your goddamn platform. And like, it's, what do you do from there? Where do you go? We're still asking. We're still asking for that. No, I know. I know. But like, that's, you know, it, it, that's where it started. And since then people have been yelling about like, so what do you do? You acquire some studios to get some fucking games because if you don't have anything in the pipeline, well, you just shit the bed. Like, what are you going to do? You're going to, you're going to. Pack it up, go home, not make another console. Maybe that's not what they decided to do. So obviously, it, it, again, if you look at kind of motivations and actions, like, yeah, okay, so they're going to buy a bunch of studios. That doesn't mean that they need to go and buy the whole fucking industry. They're just trying to get a suite of games that that helps define them as a brand, man. Yeah, well, they're, they're, it's 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 not it's not it's not uh, it's not as innocent as you make it seem. They, they, I mean, they they've they've stated this, and we saw it uh, from one of the one of the documents. Yeah, they, they flat out said they wanted to out buy Sony or whatever. No, they said them. that yeah. they could. They said that they could, and that they they didn't. But like, I know, and I understand. And I'm not saying it's innocent. I'm just saying it's predictable. Like, it, it's no. how nobody, saw, how people didn't see this coming. I mean, I, I, I guess we all did, but at the same time, it, it show me where it makes financial sense for them to just keep hemorrhaging money. You know, it, it, an acquisition phase is understandable. It makes good fiscal sense, right? Like you, you're investing and you're acquiring to have things in the future, right? I don't think that 
just buy all the competition until we own everything is a legitimate financial decision. Like, I don't think that that's a good thing. I don't think companies decide that either. That's very weird, weirdly super villain. And I understand that they they have the money to just buy everything if they need to, but they they they're not going that direction. It doesn't seem like they're going that I, direction. I just feel like there's so many different types of qualifiers we can add to this whole scenario that are all true. But when people hear one of them, it sounds like you're one way or the other. Like th- like we've discussed pre- previously, do we prefer Microsoft acquiring this uh, Activision Blizzard or do we prefer Tencent doing it mm-hmm. or the Saudi group or wherever? Obviously, most of us will save Microsoft. But then again, do we think that Microsoft is here to acquire these games and feel like this is the best way for Microsoft to organically create a, st- a bunch of studios that you know will release the games that we feel like are, you know ones that we want to play not necessarily it's it's being done in a sort of in a ham-fisted way sort of a brute force way that you know microsoft doesn't have the best track record with acquiring studios so that that's another point and then you know there, there's just so many levels to this that we can add to this whole scenario do we feel like microsoft acquiring activision blizzard means the doom for sony no you know do we fear monopolies do we fear Yes, you know, the, the, there's just so many layers to this onion that, you know, when you an, you can answer all of them and just seeing one independently makes you seem like you're, you know... Well, no, I understand that, but, like, context is important, right? Like, we're talking about an industry where Sony has enough stronghold or uh, enough leverage to just leverage their market share for exclusivity. That's, that's a huge amount of pull. And that shows a very lopsided industry. And in that context, I'm not really super concerned. Like if, if Microsoft were that that brief point where Microsoft looked like they were on top with the 360, if we were talking that Microsoft, I'd be getting uncomfortable right now. I, I and I understand that we could still get there. Right? Uh, ironically, ironically, the the 360 era is the era where they should have acquired all these studios. I they yeah, I know. Been- Bungie I know, but like EA done. was acquiring so much shit, and like it, it, it would have looked really bad. Like, I'd, especially then, that would have made me go, "Oh fuck no, uh uh-uh, uh, this ain't cool. This is an arms race between EA and Microsoft, and I don't like that because I'm a Sony man." Because yeah, I was, I was definitely PlayStation by the time 360 came around. Because fuck that noise, my Sony, this guy, not talking about that. Yeah, yeah. Um. Just real quick, I. Uh, Andre's trying to get in. Um, he is he still added in the chat here, Carlos? Yeah, I can try to message him. Yeah, yeah, hot message him so he could get in. Um, yeah, and, and here, here's the thing, Car- uh, Brett. Go to your point, right? And again, I and I know some of you guys don't think this is true, but it's the truth, right? You, you some people out there are think of this. You guys remember in school when they showed you those old like uh videos of like uh nazi germany spreading out like like a octopus like, right videos of like uh oh. nazi germany spreading out like like a like i'm here yeah, myself yeah 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 uh, oh. not germany spreading why am i here myself andre uh we, we can hear the feedback from your, the stream yeah, you're watching. Can, yeah, yeah can let you me put a uh, headset on andre, yeah I got uh, we, we can hear the feedback from i got the it um mob hits as to what manny's drawing that's under nda sir <laughs> um but anyway so so people think microsoft is like and i and what i'm just gonna go with it remember those those old videos right of nazi germany spreading across europe like a like an octopus or whatever right so people so replace germany with washington state and green arrows yeah <laughs> so people see it this way but no it's not like that again and and again i know some of you guys dispute this now Activision was on sale and they went to Microsoft. This isn't Microsoft gobbling everybody up. They bought Bethesda. Yes, that was big, but they weren't going. And I know there was a point where Microsoft did try to buy Activision back in the day, but I'm talking about in this instance, it was Activision. And Act and Microsoft has the money. You know, so what are they gonna do? You know, so so again, I I, I don't like this whole narrative that Oh, Microsoft's gobbling up everybody. No, they were present. If you were Microsoft, you would have done the same fucking thing, you know. Yeah. And so, yeah, so, well, so also, like, that, that implies hostile takeovers. Yeah, it's and it's not. Like, oh, they came to Microsoft. 
yeah, that like if this were a hostile takeover, we would have be having an, a completely completely. I, we, me and Brett would be on you guys' side. Complete, all of us would. You know, <laughs> all of us would be on your side right now. You yeah. know, but, so, but like, yeah. Go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna just throw this out there. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say, make, it, so say, it, say it. Say it. Say it. Already, like I'm gonna just make you more mad because here, here, here's the, here's the dirty rotten straight truth. Yeah, y'all are fucking fanboys. Straight up, <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> Like here's here's the thing, you are upset about possible exclusivity for a decade down the road for systems that are fucking hypothetical. You have sworn your allegiance a decade down the road for a product you don't even fucking know that hasn't even been dreamed by the engineers who are going to fucking invent it. You are if you are upset about exclusivity. After a 10-year window, you are the hardest kind of simp because you have already just decided that you are a lifelong, loyal uh, emissary to a fucking company, right? Somebody that is getting money out of you, right? Like, I understand trying to see where these guys are fucking coming from and trying to understand points of view. And I can even understand saying, hey, some of these companies, some of these video game developers are full of people who are really passionate about what they do, Right? But saying, I don't care, I don't know what's going to happen, but 10 years down the road, I got my fucking Sony hat on. You're a fucking fanboy. And that's the problem right here. And that's the reason Adam isn't here. So if you are getting that upset about the exclusivity at the end of that 10-year fucking window, just just hang it up, man. Just realize that you're, you're, you're getting upset yeah. over shit you really shouldn't be. And you're being aligned with things that you really, like, you shouldn't have opinions that hard about things that haven't happened a decade out well, chill the fuck out yeah all right uh we got to introduce our good friend mr andre tipton how are you sir hey what's up man what's going on not much yeah so you, taco you, man yeah taco man you already know what we're talking about man what, what, what's your view on you know the latest happenings with the ftc um yeah so so the, the latest thing is, is like is basically, why, yeah, go ahead man that, that is why I, thoughts, that bro. is why i like brett yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Brad put he put that's the nail in the head right that's the nail in the hammerhead right there man that's that's I mean I'm sitting here listening to this is like somebody even said like well if Sony goes under do, does anybody not understand how deep everybody's pockets are everybody has deep pockets everybody and Sony is not listen you got to do you you got to know how japanese business works you got to understand sony is just not going to walk up to square and go hey are you for sale i want to buy you that doesn't work like that they have to be in in dire straits or looking to be acquired or looking to partner with you know they'll they'll get a bunch of exclusive stuff but that's it and the microsoft thing i mean it, this is america people buy companies in america all the time this, I mean, this is not, I mean, like you said, this is a hypothetical, a lot of this stuff is hypothetical. This stuff is, every, when, they, when they acquire all these companies, there's not going to be any product shown for years. You have to develop and curate all this stuff. It just doesn't happen overnight. And the, I mean, just play what you got and shut the fuck up. My God. <laughs> yeah, you know, people are getting uh, like worked up, man. And it's gotten to a point uh, Andre, where um, Adam, he's not going to be on Throwdown until this is over. He's sick of the toxicity. You know how upsetting is that? We're supposed to be talking Dude, about video, I but understand. instead we're talking about acquisitions. You know, and I mean, does anybody on the podcast have a business degree? Pfft. No, no, none of none of these armchair analysts, and that's what I'm calling you. All these people online are going, well, you know, if so and so did this and blah blah blah. Dude, who cares? Who cares? We're talking about video games. This shit's supposed to be fun. Chill. Yeah, yeah My but, God. It, but again, like, they, they fear that Microsoft is going to gobble everybody up. You know? Listen, Microsoft's got deep pockets. They can't buy everybody. Well, first of all, you have to be for sale for people to buy you first. So, I mean, you know, you can't buy something that's not for sale. Yeah. But, and, and again, I'm, I'm glad you bring that up. It's not that Microsoft go went, oh, we're going to gobble up Activision next. Activision came to them. 
I don't. People seem to convenient. Censored. Yeah, exactly. They conveniently I, they forget were in, that. They were hurting. They were hurting for cash. Mm -hmm. They had bled. They had bled dry. So they had hemorrhaged money so long for so long. Depending on oh, let's make sure we put Skyrim on every device ever, and let's make sure we put Call of Duty on everything. You can't bet on those two cat. Yes, they're cash cows. Yes, but that's not the that's not the only thing they have. So they have to. They have to, you know, vary their product. It's like you have to get everybody interested. I mean, you have to. That's why King is involved. You got King in there. All that. You have to get the money, you know. And then King didn't even. They didn't even. They didn't even perform well enough. So to help save them either. So they bought. They got all these people together, and they still needed help. So they went to Microsoft. They had. They went to people to, that they had thought had the deep pockets. Hey man, let's work together. Let's do something. Yeah. I mean, it's. <sighs> But the thing about this is, this has happened many times in this business. This happens all the time. Remember, you'll you'll play a game, you'll play, you'll say, "Man, what happened to the company that made that game?" Oh, when the game came out, they they fell under, they they went under, and somebody else acquired them. It happens all the time. THQ. Yep. Oh man, rest in peace. The yeah. Original THQ. Yeah, you're right. Because the new yeah, yeah. THQ is just. THQ, you know, not. Well, no, but but yeah, it's, but, yeah. it's you know, it's Nordic Games, and they renamed themselves. But no, it was the whatever THQ was originally is not whatever this company is yeah. now. That company is now. Okay, I, I'll give you like a small example, and I, I, I mean, me and to, you, me and a few of you guys are probably the only people that know anything about this. Uh, when the PC Engine was the number one console on the planet. And they were kept flooding games and flooding games out there. They had tons of money. They had tons of product. They had they were the top dog. And over time, they were like, okay, we thought we were the shit. So we just kept cranking out stuff, cranking out stuff. Next thing you know, we're losing money. Yeah. So they had to close, they had to close up shop. They tried to reinvent themselves. They had to close up shop. And then Konami said, Hey, we like you guys. Let's just buy you. And then they acquired them. I mean, they acquired them because they were hurting for money. That's how that worked. They were like, "Hey, any we just... seat?" Yeah, yep. it was a, uh, well, yeah, like a no, a no. Well, they had what it was. It was that they ended up working together a lot until to the point where NEC was just almost a shell of a company, and that and right. the, um, the Japanese earthquake they actually couldn't really survive that. Yeah. So their their company was already diminished by that point in, in general. So they had already been working with 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 Konami with Bomberman and all that other stuff. Yeah. So they just essentially just uh, yeah we can't we can't survive this. We can't so survive. They just, so they just essentially you know bought the whole bought the whole thing lock stock and barrel. But that usually that sort of stuff doesn't happen in Japan. Usually no. if there's a it's it a has, merger. It they has become, to be something it has to be something yeah, catastrophic. Were, yeah. Yeah, they become they become something like a Square Enix or yeah. uh, Sega Sammy, you know, right. Bandai Namco, like yeah, Bandai, like, Na Bandai Namco, yeah, or, or Namco Bandai as they used to be called, yeah, yes. Oh, uh, people forget that, but but yeah, it's again, man, it's just, tempers are flaring too much over this stuff, man, um, and it, it's over. I'm not here's the thing, I understand the the concerns at a base level yes we don't want like two or three companies owning everybody i get that but that's not what's gonna happen you know like 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 andre said these companies need to be on sale you know and like for example people are like oh they're gonna buy up sega next sega's like no we're not up for sale <laughs> they, they can't just come in there and buy them you know it doesn't work like that um it, it, it's crazy. Uh, uh, Rich, get in here, man, because remember, you were specifically asked to be on Throwdown by Jay Shep. Um, so, you know, I, I'd love to hear your, your thoughts on this uh, continuing drama. First and foremost, excellent thoughts by everybody so far, and a shout out to Mr. Otaku Man, the legend. Yes. <laughs> my man, man, my man, Rich. What's up, bro? <laughs> yes, sir. What's going on? So, uh, my thoughts on this. My honest opinion, I don't give a damn what happens. <laughs> now, let me explain a few things. All right. For, first and foremost, I understand there are people that are angry. Um, 
I question whether or not those people actually ever play Call of Duty or will play Call of Duty because it feels as though the basis of the case was focused on Call of Duty, which is a game that will continue to be on every platform. So I didn't I don't really understand where the anger is coming from. I understand there is a concern that Microsoft will just continue to gobble up a whole bunch of companies. But one thing that I think does have to be said is that the public opinion does matter. You know, you know, Microsoft got exposed this entire case. So if you think that they're going to operate everything the same way that they have been doing, I kind of think they know people have been watching. They can't just operate everything exactly the same. And what Tony said about them uh, taking some time away from acquiring, I do think that is going to happen after this because they need to really focus on the return on investment with all the stuff they've already acquired. We've only really started to see some games that they're working on with this last showcase. So I really don't think that... Uh, they're going to be able to continue to be given the opportunity to buy all these companies when the companies they already have aren't really doing anything at all. They really need to shift their focus on the games they have coming. So that's number one. Now, as far as them, the, the, the all the statements about them outspending Sony, what I really don't understand is the people that think that Sony is in danger. Did people not follow the news about what's been happening at Sony? I saw today they announced, oh, we have a ton of plans for the Horizon series. Everybody knows the Spider-Man 2 drops in October, and that's going to sell and move a ton of PlayStation 5 consoles. Not to mention God of War, The Last of Us, all these other IPs. Sony has done all the work you should do as far as building up your first-party studios. So anybody that has an extreme thought that because Microsoft wins this case, Sony is in trouble. I really will question what school they went to if they think that, because <laughs> it just doesn't make any kind of sense. You know, you're trying to say this is a doom gloom situation for Sony. It's not. And I will also add again, Sony has other exclusive third party deals. We just saw Final Fantasy 16, which is on P which is on PlayStation. However, you know, in December, at the end of December, it will be eligible to come to PC, finally. But what I'm basically saying is they have access to a lot of games that aren't on every platform. So it's, we can't sit up here and act like Microsoft shouldn't have access to their own games as well. But again, I'm going to go back to the point that Microsoft, they already have enough studios, so they need to focus on working with what they have and stop acquiring all these other studios. That, that's what I would say moving forward. But to answer the question specifically about what I think about this case, uh, I did get a chance to watch some of the hearing today because Adam sent me a link to this hearing that the FTC was in. And I'm just going to say this because this hasn't been said yet. When I saw the hearing and they were listing all the stuff that FTC should be focused on as far as other case there are a whole shitload of things they should be focused on that are more important than this gaming shit. So I really didn't understand when I heard Microsoft brought up and then I hear, oh, but we have all these things going on. You have people messing around with ring technology. They made a mention of somebody of kids that were being threatened to get killed, so on and so forth. Uh, an old woman who was uh, harassed as well. I mean, there's a lot of things going on, the corrupt nature of the education system. It's a whole bunch of other stuff that the FTC is fighting for. And for that reason, I would say that's good. They should focus on that. But when I hear stuff like this Microsoft merger brought up in these discussions, this game and shit has absolutely nothing to do with some of the other serious things happening in this country today. So I think they need to focus on that. And by the way, they did say that they were going to get a 25% reduction in their budget because of their lack of leadership in the way that they have been operating as a company. So that should tell you right there, they aren't really fit to really have this whole case in the first place. Uh, I don't. I understand there are people that they were happy to hear that they appealed. And then of course that appeal was denied. Obviously we'll see what happens from here on out. But my final word I would say is that if you are worried about this to this extent, I would, I, would, I, would, I would tell you, listen, uh, there are a ton of games to play. I really don't understand why you're so concerned about this. This is a fucking fantastic year to be a video game fan. 
So I don't understand why anybody is bitching and complaining and worried about what's happening in legal stuff, in acting. As Andre said, as armchair analysts, I really like that definition. I don't understand law. I'm not going to waste my time on law. All I know is I have the access to... Yeah, yeah, no. No, not that either. <laughs> all, all I know is I have access to every console I need, so whatever happens, I'm going to continue playing games. And at the end of the day, I don't really care what happens. This is business stuff. As Andre said, there's always going to be a company that's up for sale. We know that. We've been in this industry long enough to know this. So again, if you are very concerned about this, uh, I would just encourage you, listen, don't worry about it and just play your games. I mean, I, I really don't understand why there is so much hysteria. Oh, Sony's going to be in trouble. We have to worry about this. Man, there is so much more to life. I, I just don't get it. I don't get it at all. But that's just my opinion. And again, if you're angry, I apologize. Uh, but I don't know, man. I'm too busy playing games to worry about this shit. That's just my opinion. Yeah. Well, <laughs> by the way, I, I was just checking the uh, Throwdown Discord right now. Something controversial has happened, man. No. Uh-oh. Dumeke is now saying he da, he just wants this to be over. Yeah, man, that's good. I agree. I, it, yo, man, uh, I be, I've been say I said. Remember, I went on my rant weeks ago on this shit. I'm like, why are we still talking about this? like I I didn't I didn't find this stuff. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, it kept escalating, you know. And I will admit though, that trial was pretty fucking entertaining. I must say. You know, I mean, there were there were definitely juicy details. Yeah, like sure. that that was the probably the highlight for me. There was a lot of juice coming out, a lot, a lot of yeah, a lot of interesting things. But again, man, like I, I want this to be over. I hope you know the 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 Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, which is not a favorite of mine. I'll just leave it at that. Hope they don't appeal. The, you know, I hope they just like let it go. It's like we need this to be over. This is fucking done. I want to talk about games again. This is games are actually coming out now. You know, can we talk about that, please? Um, but it is what it is, man. Um, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, go ahead. I, I will mention, uh, like w like Rich mentioned, I, I do I do understand uh, people's disappointments. There are people who do have legitimate uh, legitimate concerns. The overwhelming uh, percentage of, of people that are complaining are fan are just fanboys. Yeah, let's just um, be honest. I'm I'm not saying the throwdown guys are. <laughs> I'm not saying the the guys in the Discord are fanboys. Are, I'm saying the large majority of people are fucking fanboys. Let's just be let's just if be you, real here. You know, if you let, go on yeah. Twitter, yeah, the if Twitter sphere. Yeah, if you go on Twitter, it's it's yeah. it's a, it, it's a, 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 a several combinations of things. You have PlayStation fanboys who are bitching and moaning. You have Microsoft fanboys who are like grandstanding and like acting like all high and mighty and shit with their arms crossed, like. <laughs> And it's like, like you, you, you're seeing those tweets, man. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm laughing because Bob Pizz goes, "I was a fanboy." <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I've seen the, so, I've seen the, I've seen the tweets. Go ahead, Rich. No, I just was gonna say, yeah, the fanboy response to this has been ridiculous. Now, I'm pretty sure you guys saw when the appeal happened. Somebody actually went to the Wikipedia page for yes. FTC and put an image of PlayStation on yeah. there. So that that's what funny. I said. <laughs> it's, 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 it's just ridiculous. The fanboy stuff is is outrageous. Yeah, but and, and uh, it, yeah, but I I, I got to say this just real quick. But I also get it because here's the thing. This is why the FTC ultimately lost. In my, I mean, they were going to lose regardless. But okay, their case was we need to stop this merger because or, or acquisition because you know, we are afraid of what's going to happen to the industry, right? That's that's what they claimed their case was. The actual case was, this is how this acquisition is going to hurt Sony. That's what their case was, and it was flimsy as shit. You know, if their case had been, this is how it's going to hurt the industry, that's a stronger case. But they couldn't make that because they have no facts to back it up. So they're like, this is how it's going to hurt Sony. And they still didn't have enough facts to back that up either. You know, again, this is how it's going to hurt the biggest player in fucking gaming. Yes, Microsoft has more money than Sony. This is true. But the PlayStation division makes way more money than the Xbox division. Right. Mm -hmm. PlayStation has been dominant yeah. since 1995. 1995. You know, and you're afraid they're going to go under because Microsoft is going to buy fucking Activision. Come on, son. Yeah, get out of here with that it, bullshit. 
Lo- Logic wins. Says Xbox guys twerking on Fifth Avenue right now. <laughs> and my yeah. bit says Xbox fanboy celebrating like they won the World Cup. <laughs> okay. Yeah, man. It you know the whole thing with this. Also, you know, buyer beware. The don't think that Microsoft's going to acquire uh, Activision Blizzard and it's going to be the status quo. Things are going to change. Oh yeah, they are going to change. But but to that end, don't think that if this deal had fallen through, that things would go back to normal. That Activision would just exactly. Be, yeah, but, no, somebody was going to buy those motherfuckers. And as I've said, it is better for Microsoft, an American company, to buy fucking you know Activision than some fucking communists. You know, so be thankful it's Microsoft and not Tencent. You know, anyway, Carlos, go on. So. Oh, hold on, wait, 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 I want, not only do I want Rich to go next, but I, Rich, Jay Shep is in the building, man. So, Jay Shep, here he is. Richard Bailey Jr. is in the house for you, son. Uh-oh. You know? Well, you may have to tell him, you may have to tell him to rewind the uh, feed. To, uh, yes. As to what I said earlier. I, I just was going to make a comment and say, uh, so, so Tony, to go to what you said. Oh, hold on, hold on, Rich. I got to so, play, play the sound, man. All right, go go ahead, man. Go so, ahead. <laughs> to go to what you said. So let's say that Tencent did, that this fell through and Tencent did decide to buy uh, Activision. And then they decided, well, you know what? We don't want this on Xbox or PlayStation. Now, how do you think the fans would feel then? Oh, shit. You're right. And Rich, let's go, <laughs> let's go even further, right? Let's go for another company <laughs> that could buy them. You want Apple buying this shit? We're going to relegate all <laughs> Activision games to Apple fucking computers that can't even play games. Come on, oh, that man. would be terrible. You know, yeah. they're working on that on that uh, that, that layer. Um, yeah, the, metal, yeah metal, metal, uh, metal three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and that will definitely be exclusive. They're worried about Microsoft buying stuff and making it exclusive. If it's on if Apple buys anything, it will be on Apple. Hardware it'll be only. Ex- oh, yeah. exactly. And that's do you want that or or Google? Or Google, oh, yeah, 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 Google because it. they're a trusted name in gaming, you know. Yeah, look at Stadia. Exactly. So, Michael, yeah. again, out of, out of virtual console ever. Yeah. <laughs> so, out of everybody that could have bought them, Microsoft is the best one. Everybody else is a horrible fucking decision. All of them, you know. Well, I mean, also, like, can we? I think a lot of the people, like in the Twitterverse, and that that you know, that's I think we're all railing against here, um, that are that are freaking the fuck out right now. I, I don't think that they're afraid of dominance. I think that they're afraid of parody, and I don't understand why. Like, I, none of y'all can really think Sony's going to be dethroned. Like Sony, like, bro, they've been king for twenty years. Right, like you might be able to take him down a peg or two, but that's that's fucking about it. Like, am I? I can't be the only one that is like perfectly secure in Sony's future. Yeah, hold right, on, Brett. Brett, I, Brett, I got I got to pull the nerd fixing his glasses. Actually, it's been twenty eight years. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> it's, Does it's, anybody it's think almost... Sony's not gonna be okay? Well, I I will say oh. this. Uh, this whole this whole acquisition thing, you know, freaking is what sixty nine billion dollar acquisition, sixty nine billion, and it's one of the biggest companies right after they got Bethesda, yeah. after they got Rare, after they got Double Find, after they got uh, you know the people who made New Vegas, you know all of these companies, and now the ball's in Sony's court, and I actually one of the things that I do in, now that this has gone through or is going through. And in, there's going to be hardly any roadblocks now that the CMA is 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 uh, chilling out with this. It's like I I do you know PlayStation fans or your fanboys or whoever and the like uh, on the Twitter series, you cheer for the Square Enix acquisition because Microsoft can't say shit about that, you know. Because uh, and honestly, if Sony gets like let's say they get from software and Square Enix. It'll be much less than than getting uh, Activision, and you know, for a lot of gamers, it'll be a much better deal. So, you know, if you want to, if you want to let them fight, let them fight like that. Don't don't bust out no death threats on fucking judges and bullshit like that. Oh my god, I didn't hear about about that happening, but it happened, didn't it? Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, I'm not surprised. I am not surprised. <laughs> um, r- real quick, uh, Jay Shep says. 
wait, Microsoft is just another trillion dollar company that can't make good games like the rest of them. Microsoft, Xbox, that has been a gaming entity since 2000, right? I believe it was 2000, 2001. They have a history of gaming and there was a time where Xbox was the dominant force. It was brief, I'll give you that, it was brief, but they were the dominant force in gaming. When people thought gaming, they thought Xbox 360, right? So they have a history. Yes, I know that squandered, the, the Xbox One era fucking, the lost decade that brought, but they actually have a history. Google doesn't have a history with gaming. Apple sure as fuck doesn't, you know? And yeah, Tencent does, but again, you don't want those motherfuckers owning Activision. You do not want that, you know, because they will piecemeal that shit. I, that's horrible. You don't want that, you know? Yeah. Um, oh, Manny, you need to know. Go ahead. And, okay. a, and yeah. a much more specific thing, um, you know, because a certain uh, Chinese, uh, they had certain uh, stakes in a certain country's government, they couldn't say th certain things. You remember that one yeah. time when they banned that one person because he said something about something a, a certain country didn't like? Yeah, well, you know, yeah, we, we know a certain Mr. John Cena had to bend the knee to these communists, yes. you know? Yes. Um, you, you, by the way, real quick, Jay Shep, the, uh, Microsoft has been in third place for 20 years. No, they haven't. Again, during the 360 era, nope. they were actually like number one. Actually, number two because Nintendo was fucking killing it. With no, no, no they're, it? they're number three. They ended up number three. No, no, they ended up. But for, I'm talking about, again, I said for a brief moment of time, <laughs> you know, so it wasn't 20 years straight. There was a brief moment of time when 360 was the thing in gaming. You know, and and that's yeah, well, that, and, I mean, and that's the era. Was, these fucking the Xbox, thing. yeah, yeah, the second, the second thing. thing. But but yeah, and, but, and that's and, also and like the era that the Xbox still cling cling to. It's like the fucking being a Mets fan, nineteen eighty six, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Chris. It was a, it was a, but it was a, but the thing about it is also like yeah, like at that same moment where people were saying, oh yeah, PlayStation's done, they should give up. Fucking Gabe, Gabe Newell, Newell said that could, you know, Gabe Newell said they. Should shouldn't even you shouldn't even be making consoles all oh, kinds yeah. of crazy uh, shit remember going that on. remember that way, I, yeah. I still i still have my 1986 championship <laughs> shirt from when i was nine years old <laughs> yes uh, I, <laughs> hey man, it, dude, I, have wait, a, man. I have a new i have a new i have a newspaper a newspaper uh, uh clipping of it when they won <laughs> nice. um <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, there was that brief moment. But, no, overall, yes, there have always been third place. But, again, they actually have been in the gaming industry doing gaming things, not like these other clowns, you know? Um, you know, I mean, there was a there was a point in time Sony was trying to make the Halo killer. They were, yeah. Again, there uh, was, yeah. They, would, they wouldn't do that for some bullshit company. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yeah. You're right. And I do I do agree with Jay Shep. Three, 360 era was my favorite era as well. Of, of gaming? That was, mm -hmm. that, that was probably the last great era of gaming, to be honest, in my opinion. You know, that was where most of the, most of the innovative most innovative games came out. Yeah, you're right because yep. Kota, you know Otaku man, you know what happened after that? Innovation went downhill. <laughs> you know, of course, yeah. Hey, really um, what's so up, bro? One, one thing that I haven't I've been waiting for people to mention it online or anything. Um, you guys, they. All you fanboys, you do realize this is where the hard work starts now. So you might as well just chill because they got a lot of work to do. None of this stuff's going to come to fruition for another three, four years anyway. You know, maybe some stuff behind the scenes that have been worked on, you know, will come out earlier. But this is where the work starts for, for Xbox. So and Bethesda and everybody, the hard work starts now. So everything that they've already acquired, that stuff's going to be coming out. But... This is where the hard work starts. So they got to get to work. Yeah, no, I agree. You can't be sitting there talking about, well, what's Sony going to do? Dude, who cares? They got to go to work. So, I mean, <laughs> they, 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 they're not paying attention to you motherfuckers. They, they don't care. Listen, you can say all the shit you want to. They don't care. We got to go to work. No, you're 100% you're right. Now, now it's like, okay, you got Bethesda, got Activision. Let's see something. You know, you gotta push, you gotta show them. Hey, gotta, hey Carlos, fifty-five minutes, no Adam. We got it, man. Gotta have something. Gotta have some. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the Adam's not with us, but his spirit definitely is. Yeah, exactly. You know, gears. You know, uh, gears, remember, you know, remember when gears came out, man? Like everybody was getting that three sixty. You know, mm -hmm. 
and, yep. and Call of Duty, right? It was on every platform, but what did people associate Call of Duty with for many years? The 360, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So until it, until until the PlayStation 4 came out. Yeah, it, yeah, exactly. And then you, you we know what happened there. Um <laughs> But yeah, man, so yeah, you know, we'll see what happens tomorrow with the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. Hopefully they'll just let this die so we can just go on with our lives, you know? And yeah, I don't know. I, any more thoughts on this bullshit? Just play games. And just sit down somewhere and play games. Sit Jesus down, yeah, right? You know. Yes. How about yeah? Get a Steam Deck. Go outside, man. You know. Something, something. Do something. I don't care what you play. Oh shit. Go play yeah, checkers, yeah. brother. I don't give a shit. Go play something. Shit. Yeah, yeah, that's what I. That's what I. That's what I don't understand. This is obviously a standout year in gaming, but I guess. Uh, some other people want to be preoccupied with other stuff. I mean, I, I really don't get it because I've been busy this entire year. I w- I've been busy playing games, so I don't I don't have time to worry about this shit. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I got to read this. Jay Shep cracks me up. He goes, I'm not wishing this, but if Activision fails under Microsoft, you guys are going to have to kick me out. I'm going to be asking about a question about this every Sunday. <laughs> Fair enough, man. Keep it coming. <laughs> Oh my God! I don't, yo, I don't even know what else happened in gaming this week, man. Like th- again, this has just taken up every fucking it, it, available it, thing. It, 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 it dominated the airways to the point where we literally didn't even do any show notes. <laughs> we didn't need to. We, we, I don't think for the last three. I think for the last three episodes of the main throwdown, we haven't had to do show notes. That's just just mm-hmm. this, yep. you know, taking over. Uh, damn, mob hit says nothing happened. Um, all right, so uh, let, let's get. What's up? Somebody was going to say something? Guess not. Nope. Uh, all right. Um, let, let's talk about the games we're, we're actually playing, man. Um, Andre, what, what have you been playing lately, man? What, what, what's gotten you going? Um, recently, I uh, just picked up a, a second backup PS Vita. And, oh, uh, shit. Uh-oh. I modded it. And uh, I've been playing Vita stuff, dude. I've been, I've, I mean, I've already got a Vita, but I've just, I've just Vita, been downloading Vita's life. I've been doing all this other stuff and playing all these other games, man. It's just like, man, you know, Ghost of Tsushima, stuff like that. Spider- I'm going back. I'm about to redo Spider-Man. Um, you know, I've just been playing that stuff. We're working a lot, so I ain't really be playing a whole lot. Yeah. Yo, that, many, yeah. Many, you, got the, you got the OG? You got the OG. Yeah, o- Otaku, man. Which, which, um, which uh, Vita did you get? Well, I've got the OG. I've got the I've got the OLED. I got the white OLED, but I got a slim. I got a blue slim. Yeah, man. Yo, I'm still tight. I didn't buy that blue slim before the price went up. You know, they got this thing too because I want to have a backup one. You know, because I got the OG as well. Um, but yeah, that's dope. Uh, Rich, what about you, man? Um, you know, you say you've been playing a lot of games lately. So, what have you been playing lately? So, uh, I actually just did a review for Oxen Free Two Lost Signals that I published today. Nice. Uh, been- been playing that on PlayStation 5. You know, if you're a fan of the first Oxen Free, you'll probably enjoy this game. Um, yeah, I've, I've been playing a lot of stuff. I've also played some stuff. I don't really know if I can talk about it yet. Uh, oh, I'll just oh. say that uh, there's a couple of games coming out soon that I've gotten the chance to take a look at. So uh, you might want to check those out. Oh, yeah. And I have been playing a game that... Uh, Adam Vale is actually going to be reviewing this uh, Double Dragon Gaiden game that's coming oh, out later yes, this month. Yes. Yeah, I did like a little video preview for that over on the Coalition Gaming channel. So if you are looking forward to the game or you want to get some more information, I would encourage you to check out that video. Plus, Adam is going to be doing a review sometime later this month because it's not in- out until, I think, July 27th. Um, so, yeah, look for that. But But, yeah, I just been busy playing a few different things trying to look into the backlog and uh, yeah I, I did start playing alan wake again because i'm i gotta get ready oh, for alan nice, wake too nice so now rich yeah. I, have a, I, have a, I have a question is one of you know obviously you you know don't answer <laughs> yes or no but oh yeah yeah it, it's one of the games you're playing does it involve primitive creatures that are extinct uh, that are known for being giant <laughs> <laughs> well that is a great question uh <laughs> Let, I, I, I hate to dis, I, I, and I hate to disappoint, but uh, no. Interesting. And and I have to say, thank God, because I heard that uh, that particular uh, whatever you're calling is a monstrosity. Literally, <laughs> it's a monstrosity. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I heard. 
And, and, and by the way, I, I think you can mention that because it will be out in about 15 minutes. Okay, I guess well, I could, I, could, I could mention it because you're not playing Exo Primal. So I guess, it's, yeah. I guess it's trash. I mean, I was contacted about potentially playing the game. and uh, So was I, by the way. I, <laughs> I, I, I declined. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's not going to happen, Captain. No, yeah, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm good. You know, I'm good. <laughs> what you don't want to play? You don't want to play Ryu not in Street Fighter? What's wrong with you yeah. people? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Think about Boondocks right now. Why do you like R. Kelly? He good. <laughs> um. <laughs> um <laughs> Cause he did. <laughs> man, Boone actually the shit, man. Um, let's do a double header here, man. Uh, Carlos and me finish that Final Fantasies, man. Oh, oh wow. hold on, we can do the real Very shit nice. right now, you know. <laughs> where is it? Where, where, where is it? Hold on, hold on. There we go. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, hey, man. Go ahead, Carlos. <laughs> Yo, this. This game, you know, the last time we talked about it, I was probably like less than halfway through the game. There's a point in time where it just it just goes full throttle, man. Sort of, you know, after that one moment where you know, you know, a couple of you know, I won't, I won't, I won't even say it, but yeah, Jay Shep, don't worry, just, Adams, Adams, I hear no spoilers for anything. Don't worry about it. You're good. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it it gets it, it you know it goes freaking a hundred miles per hour, man, and it never stops. It's yeah. So, so the boss battles, some of the yeah. best boss battles I've ever, I've ever, I've ever played, man. Yeah. Oh, in any you game, know, it's like, like any game, you know, in any like, game. Yeah. So, can I ask a question? Yes. yes. This isn't a spoiler. Uh, as far as game of the year, where it, it, you know, in it, it, let's say in the top three, how would you say this this game it ranks so far on your list? Well. Here's the thing. Here's the thing about this year, right? It, it, it's unfair for me to go. This is game of the year because what else is there? I mean, other than other than other, you know, other than Forspoken. I mean, yeah. Because here's the thing: the the only other <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, that trash! Like Je Jedi Survivor, that ain't that ain't it. And I I'm pretty sure somebody would be like, "Yo, what about Resident Evil 4? Yes, great game. But it's a remake, so I don't count that, you know. Um, so yeah, it's so to me, it's game of the year currently by default because not much has come out. Um, but you know, as I've been telling the fellas behind the scenes, to me, it's going to be between Final Fantasy sixteen and Spider Man two. Those are the top dog games for me, mm. and it'll be very interesting to see which one I ultimately or which one ultimately connects with me more you know um spider-man will probably win out in the end um but final fantasy 16 is so fucking good man yo like, tony like like this game because let's just be honest so, so, some of the other like 15 let's just be real the ending wasn't all that like the way this ended i was very satisfied <laughs> yeah. very satisfied yeah. you very, know? very very good yeah yo tony what up tell me why this game is a God of War Dragon Ball Z game. Oh shit! That, I I, this, I can see what you're talking this, about. Whoa, that, that that's you. Know, the the crazy thing is like it does so many things that are well, you know, well done, and, and it reminds me a lot of God of War in a lot of aspects. Um, and some of the fights, some they're of the crazy. fights, it's like it gets freaking crazy, man. Yeah, I I know what you and, mean with uh, the Dragon Ball Z stuff. I know what you mean. It's like, hey, giant fucking fireballs. Clashing with each other and exploding from the center, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or it's like you know, shooting the powers, like oh, it's pushing that fireball back. Oh, the other one's pushing the other one back. Push, 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 push. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I don't even think that's physically possible. Like, light can't do that, but fuck it, you know, it works. <laughs> oh man, and the story—it's probably one of the best Final Fantasy stories in a while. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it, it looks great. I do have, you know, it's you know when when you think about it, like this game at its at, at some of its peaks, is is some of the best stuff I've ever played, in its peaks. Oh but, yeah, it's you peaks, know, yeah. I feel 
I feel like uh, you know, there's a lot of other stuff that's lacking with the game. Um, level design for I don't me, feel like you know level design is a huge one. Uh, the the side quests are another one. Until the um, end, you notice what I'm talking about with those side quests. At the end, they're like, "Yo, these are yeah, good." What change. happened? You know? Yeah, th there are some good ones. Um, I still feel like they can be better, but I haven't I haven't done all of them. So to be fair with it, I haven't I haven't completed yeah, you, every yeah, quest. Yeah, you, like you, you're gonna see like the the last like ten of them, they're great. I'm like, damn, why couldn't we get this quality for all of them? You know? To uh, I don't know if uh, just I'm um, to ask this question. It, where is are these quests they're green right they're green quests yeah they're green yeah and and they're, and they're in the base yeah most of, the, most, most of them are in the base and there's a couple like when you right before you get to the last mission like a good six of them pop up in the base and then there's like four in, around the map you know gotcha and then there's a couple in your ledger you know how you have a book and shit a couple show yes. up there as well so it's like a good yeah and those are like the best of the the thing and i and they're involved too it's like you know you can't just be like oh, i'll do a, a quick side quest like no they, they take a while you know mm -hmm. like they're involved i'm like i wish i you know the other ones could have been like that but yeah level design is probably my biggest gripe you know with it and to answer rich's question again um it's it it may or may not be my game of the year i still need to like tony mentioned he's got spider-man yeah spider-man is definitely one of those that i'm looking forward to uh, Starfield is another one, and Diablo. I still need to play. Diablo. Uh, so there, so there's still you know Diablo. There's still yeah. some that can. That's how Torrent said it. Diablo. <laughs> Diablo. Diablo. Yeah. Excuse me. And uh, yeah, so we'll see. We'll see how those are. Um, but you know, it is by default my game of the year. But even if it, it doesn't end up being my game of the year at the end of the at the end of the year, um, it's a worthy game to you know put it in those types of. Uh, categories yeah. for me oh what about um what's wrong what's yeah. wrong with the level design uh it's very straightforward there's no it's they're, really linear it's, and... it's ultra linear you know it's it's the, it, it's the same level design of an action game basically you is know? it is it uh, about as bad as um lightning returns or no, you know those, the, those, those final games? fantasy 13 yeah it, it's yeah no th those even had more exploration to be honest, you know, um, thirteen because so, the, the other the other thirteen games had better level design. So you would say it's Final Fantasy X level then? No, because that had year. that had more stuff going on in them. Hmm. But um, Mop Hits was what about Tears of the Kingdom? Oh, Tony. Yeah. Ah, oh, damn. I'll, I'll I'll text you this question. Okay. There's something that bugged the shit out of me during this game. Yeah, no spoilers. That I, that, <laughs> you know that, that that it could be something that I'm just too dumb to realize. I'm gonna text you during the show and just be like, yes or no. Okay, fair and, enough. Uh, but yeah, that's that's pretty much all I had to with the with the game. Great yeah. game. Great, oh, great game. Great, great series. Um, Tears of the Kingdom. Anybody want to say anything about that potential game of the year? I you already know I was gonna win the Keeley Awards. Oh. You know? I think I, well, it I is. It, it, oh. it, it's, it's Zelda. Zelda like automatically <laughs> it's a, wins. Nintendo, yeah, 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 yeah. It's gonna win. <laughs> They'll just make up an award for it to win. That's, yeah, that's that's the way the the Keeley Awards work. Is it gonna be a best game? game for best tune, <laughs> best tune shaded game. Best adventure game. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, Rich. Um, yeah. Y yes, you're right. I think this game is 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 primed to win a lot of awards, especially the Keeley Awards. Uh, I did play the game. I haven't beaten it yet. Um, oh my really good god! Game. Are you serious, Carlos? Yeah. Okay, man. I don't. Don't. We'll talk this off off air uh, so you can put me on blast. <laughs> I know. I know. It's it seems fucking stupid. I just I never thought about it, but then I thought about it towards the end. I'm like, how the hell do you do this? Um, anyways, I, I now I got uh, questions for you. Holy <laughs> shit! Yeah. Um, How Ray, do you uh, yeah, uh, Tony's gonna block me after the after the show. Um, no, I'm not. I'm just. I'm just gonna call you stupid. But you know, nah, I'm not fucking around. Right, but it's like, okay, because I have a penchant for missing important things until the end of the game. But this is on another level, Carlos. You should be ashamed of yourself. Anyway, go on. Well, don't think, don't think I didn't think about it. <laughs> I thought about it. I thought about it during the, the game, and I'm like, I just didn't. Uh, for some reason, I, I never got to it. It's okay. weird. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk offline, man. 
or off um, air because nobody else will care. Go ahead. So yeah, the Tears of the Kingdom. I played it for a couple of hours. Uh, it's it's really good. The level, to the, you know, the opposite effect for Final Fantasies in this one. The level design is amazing. The the new mechanics with the with the 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 different systems that that are introduced into this to this game are really 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 well done. Um, there's a lot of things you can do. Uh, you know, you've seen online, and a lot of people have been creative, mostly with uh, uh, phallic uh, signals and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it, it's a really good game. I, I'm not going to, I don't want to take any credit from it, but, you know, it's not 100% my type of game. Final Fantasy 16 is more my oh. game because I, I prefer the combat in Final Fantasy 16, the story of Final Fantasy 16, <laughs> the graphics, the music, the, the enemies. It's, and, it's and- not even close. And, and and what Carlos is also saying because that this that is a mature game, whereas uh, Tears of the Kingdom, this is for the little kids, right? <laughs> right, Carlos? That's what, what you're basically saying. I mean, it's <laughs> it's uh, it's for the little kids. Uh, I mean, it, Nintendo does not stray away from that that type of <laughs> message. Yep, mm-hmm. can't counteract that narrative. <laughs> now, I'd be thinking about that. Um... That clip from uh, you know, gamer twenty three twenty three, grown man gaming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, Brett, tell us about Diablo, man. Man, I'm still pushing on that uh, to one hundred grind. Oh, like level eighty seven, eighty eight, something like that. I don't think I'm going to make it by season one, man. But uh, season one looks really, uh, really cool. Um, I finally understand the appeal of seasons, actually. It's, it's kind of a neat thing. Um, at, least in this, at least in this instance with like ARPGs and things like that. Because like running through Diablo and leveling up, it, it takes a while. But like to get to level 50 where you start doing like the dungeon delves and everything like that, it, it doesn't take that long. So... What they do is they kind of open up new server. This is the way I think about it, at least, and it helps me. What they do is they open up a new server, and they say, anybody who wants to make a new character, starting a new server of all just new characters. And this one's going to have a twist, right? They're going to do these little aspects on it that suddenly change your powers. Um, like, you know, maybe doing a critical damage unleashes a little bit of lightning. But the way Diablo works, the way the builds work is that a very small tweak here kind of goes into this uh, Rube Goldberg machine, like, that becomes your build. Like, recently I, I adjusted my thing to, um, you know, I throw out little pools of shadow damage, and I put a, <clears throat> a qualifier on that, that when that happens, it draws people in. Okay, so now when I throw, like, a bunch of them, it kind of sucks them all in and kind of pulls them towards me. Like, okay, well, I also have a bone storm. So I can turn my bone storm to a darkness ability that... that turns its own cooldown down by uh, by hitting people and consuming corpses of the people it defeats. Okay, that's cool. So let me get this straight. I can turn myself into a whirring vortex of death, and I also have another skill that groups and pulls people towards me. All right, so I'm just going to become a garbage disposal and just, like, pick on Bone Storm, start shredding, and then just pull everything in towards me and shred it in the center. And that's my build. So, like, hmm. you know, finding out a little bit of electricity could make that, you know, a whole lot different. It sounds like a small change, but it, it can be a pretty big thing. I'm looking forward to uh, rolling a Necromancer again, but I want to do a Blood Surge. Like, the entire time I'm playing Necromancer, I'm like, I could have gone this other route. And exploding seems so much fucking fun. I want to do an explosion build. So, I'm going to do an explosion build next time. And it's a good opportunity for people like Carlos to jump in on the... On the thing, and not necessarily feel like they're you know just months and months and months behind everybody. So it helps keep things a, a little fresh. Like I actually kind of wish they would do seasons on something like Elden Ring, just because I I totally get the okay now everybody's kind of rolling this again. So you're not going to come into desolate servers, and they do these neat little tweaks. I think that uh, they're going to have a lot more tweaks in future seasons, but they are just trying to feel like I don't know how much the developers even know what the fuck is going on in the game. It kind of seems like a black box situation. There's so many weird interactions that it kind of reminds me of Goat Simulator. Like, yeah, that every time I throw up my bone prison, um, 
it makes this ring that I have, it has a lucky hit chance on it for all my minions to explode. So every time I throw up my bone prison, my minions explode. Why? I don't fucking know. Does Blizzard know? Probably not. Something to do with the way that the bone prison is coded. It does vulnerable to itself or something like that. And then when it, it's destroyed, it, it does some other weird interaction that causes the ring to explode. So all my minions randomly explode. And it's fucking awesome. And nobody knows why. And I, I can't decide, like, part of me is like, that is a janky-ass way to put a game together. The other part of me is like, kind of fucking like, so nobody knows how this shit is working. Nobody knows this cra- the, the weird or, or wonderful or crazy efficient builds that you can do. You're, you can find some weird interaction in the game and make an entire build about it. That's kind of cool. And then on top of that, every season they're just going to throw variables at the, at the uh, community. And I love the fact that, that they fully understand that they're going to break the game with these variables. That's why they're seasons. That's why after like three months they're like, okay, uh, hit the redo button on it because that last season made like no sense, made everybody crazy powerful or, you know, it made um, a barbarian build that can just stand there and their thorns damage is so bad that literally a boss runs up, punches them and dies. Like, okay, cool. Weird interactions will happen. It's that that's kind of the fun of it. Um, so yeah, I've, I've been having a good time. It's a great podcast game. It's, it's exactly that thing I was yeah. looking for, man, where you're like, Hey, I'm just gonna chill out and do some stuff and and play some Diablo. You know, when you're really looking for a good story or uh, you know something epic, that's that's when you got Final Fantasy. But for the most part, it's it's just fun. Diablo is like the hostess cakes of video games. Like hmm. they're just good. I just like it. There you go, man. Awesome stuff. All right, uh, Chris, what about you? What you been playing? Oh, yeah. No, I've been so busy with work and my daughter, I haven't played Jack. And I played a little bit of um, Blasphemous that I picked up in a Steam sale, but the game is like brutally hard. Oh, man. When I play Castlevania, I know what I'm doing. No, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> it's, like, oh, <laughs> it's hard. It's hard as shit. I mean, I, I like it. I'm going to keep playing it, but it is fucking hard. But I love it. I'm playing it on the Steam Deck. It's great, and I picked up uh, Black Mesa 2 was on sale, and I want to get into that because I love Half-Life, right? the original yeah. one. And that is like a nice HD remake of the original game, so I'll let you know how it is. I'm going to try it this weekend. Nice, nice. Uh, shout out to Mop Hits again for the bits, brother. Good Thank stuff. You. Um, Manny, I'm guessing you're the same boat, right? Too busy for, for, for the games? Yeah, too busy. I've just been, I've just been um, you know, it's not like comic busy you know i still you know i'm not working till like 4 a.m in the morning uh trying to get hit deadlines but yeah i just been a little bit busy and i just haven't had the urge to sit behind the, the console in a, in a little bit but you know Hello. when when the time comes all of it's still waiting before me i still got um uh what is it um uh i still have uh ex troopers that still needs to be finished off and uh and I have um, near a uh, replicant that's still waiting for me. So yeah, and I'll eventually get onto there. Uh, I may, I may, I may end up playing that um, the Ninja Turtles, um, you know, DLC that they put out. Yeah, for Shredder's Revenge. For Shredder's Revenge, they did a really fun little thing in that one. Uh, they made alternate palettes that represent all the different iterations of turtles beyond the classic ones. Oh, nice. So. They actually have my uh, the show that I did. Like, they're the, all the characters are all their colors are all switched around to look like the 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 the, the, the are my the iteration of turtles that I worked on. Plug plug. By the way, uh, you can get all of it on DVD currently right now. Uh, Ninja Turtles two thousand three. You can get every single episode, including the movie Turtles Forever. It's on Amazon right now. You may get that Blu Ray. Yeah, uh, it's not on Blu Ray. Oh, okay. um, yeah. It's 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 standard definition. Dude. Yeah. You know, Here's the you thing, get. as I learned, DVDs still sell, or, or like the, like if you look at the pie, they right. still make up a good chunk of that the is. Sales. They still they still the, very uh, interesting it, to me. Well, it's because they're very cheap to make, and yeah. there's still people don't understand that these things are not HD. Yeah. So you know, like they'll put it on their big 4K television, and they're like, "Yeah, this looks great." Yeah. Like, no, it doesn't. 
Like, it no, looks but like yeah, shit. <laughs> it's still, you know, he, here's the one thing that to know, though, you know, getting stuff on DVD in, you know, whatever definition they put on on DVD is still actually higher than yeah. what it was on broadcast television. The um, the DAT tapes that we, or beta tapes that we used to use are actually higher than broadcast. So you are still getting a, a, a better image than what you would have if you were getting it sent through the your, to your TV, to through your little bunny ears or through your cable system. Yeah. So it'll it'll look better, just not nearly. And then animation mm-hmm. always seems to look okay, you know, when it's you know, when it's uh, you know blow, blown up and you know. Also, there's there's also the ability that they can do to sort of upscale things which a lot of companies have done where they've literally taken their old television and just like animation and stuff like avatar the last airbender was not a hd television show it was a standard definition television show and they upscaled that and they put that on netflix so there you go but yeah first time all of the episode all uh, all seasons of of, of uh, Tur- uh, ninja turtles 2003 has been available ever on all, on uh, all at once uh, you know, when we originally did the show, we didn't. Um, we were trying to release every single season, but we never got to it. Uh, Nickelodeon bought the whole franchise, and we just stopped right there. Oh, there man. you go. But good at least stuff. it's out. That's good. Yeah, you know? and, and I'm excited to play that because it's got Usagi Ojimbo, and it's got a couple of other things in there. So yeah. Also, I have been dabbling and watching uh, the new Final Fantasy game, so I do know some of the things that happened. Oh. <laughs> like Jag hey, on man. I don't have any urge to really play that game, but I do have an interest in what what's going on with the plot. So. Yeah, no, it's, it's a good story. You know, it's like a it's like a seven hour movie though. <laughs> it's it's long. <laughs> it, it, apparently, if you take all the cutscenes together, it's actually longer than the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Yeah, it's really long. Yeah, but like, but a lot of those uh, those uh, those cinematics are those bullshit cinematics. You know, the ones where they're like. You know, the yeah. ones that Brett was complaining about? Yeah, the stiff ones, yeah. <laughs> the stiff ones. Yeah, that's how it is, though. Yeah, all right, Um, and before we wrap up, I want to talk about something special, man. Um, So, for you guys who may not know, I my first, like, paid gig was for uh, PC Mag and Geek.com, and Geek.com was basically where I was... Um, it's This is kind of considered a, a derogatory term, but it's accurate, I was a permalancer, uh, rich o- otaku man. You know what that means, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I was a uh, permanent freelancer, right? Um, so my editor there was Mr. Jordan Miner, who I met at Comic Con, I believe, in 2015 when he was just starting out in the, the games industry at PC. My young guy, right? But I kind of. I saw something in him, you know, it was like something special about this guy. So it was kind of interesting that he was my editor. So he now has a a book that he's been working on for the past two years. It's called Video Game of the Year. And the book is finally out. Here it is, the physical, actual book. A a lot of game journalists talk about, hey, I'm going to write a book. I'm going to release a book. This motherfucker actually did it, you know. And what's cool about this book is basically um, he... It starts from 1977 all the way up till now, right? And he highlights a game from each year and talks about it. But it's not really like an objective thing. Like, this is the best game of the year. He goes, this is what he feels is the most important game of the year. And then uses that to talk about a certain thing, right? Like, one of the game. Is that a dog, by the way? Shout out to Brett's dog. Um, (laughs) Or somebody's dog. Um, Like, for example, one of the more controversial entries in this it's 2008. He picked Spore, right? He admits that is not a good game, right? But Spore is emblematic of the whole hype culture of video games, right? Where games can get so much hype behind them that no matter how much budget you could have from, they will never live up to expectations. Star Citizen, I'm looking at you, you know? So that's kind of the premise of the book where he just uses games as a launching point to talk about something larger, you know? And he wrote 45, like, essays for this. Basically, they're just really, really long reviews, right? And he also has contributions from up to 75 uh, gaming journalists, right? Including your boy, you know? He, like, when he first started writing a book, he was like, Tony, you know, I want you to write a blurb for me. You know, pick a game. My first pick, I was like, 
Metal Gear Solid. I got to talk about that game. And he's like, um, our friend Tim picked that. I'm like, okay, Metal Gear Solid 3. And that's what I went with. You know, so I did a, a quick blur about Metal Gear Solid 3, why I feel it's um, one of, you know, the game of 2005. And it, it's cool to see my words in a physical book. It's not just online nonsense that could easily be erased by like an EMP or something. Like if some shit like that happens, this will endure, you know. So uh, shout out to Jordan, you know, for releasing this. And thank you to him for having me be a part of it. it, it it's an honor just you know, being among such illustrious company with other journalists and um, an announcement that I will make tonight. Manny and I have had an idea for an offshoot throwdown show for a while where we basically interview people from the industry, right? And, you know, going to um, the events, the, the book launch, talking to Jordan, Mike, I think this would be the perfect guy to have for this show. So we'll probably call it Throwdown Interviews, and we'll probably do that pretty soon for you guys. So I think it'll be cool. And just like this book, I want to use those episodes as a springboard to talk about a larger thing. Like, I want to talk to Jordan about... So the One of the reasons he brought this up, and he, he brought up a good point, this book talks about games that you can't even get anymore. So I want to talk to him about game preservation because that's something we don't often talk about. Something that got lost yep. in the shuffle that came out this week, news-wise, 87% oh. of the games... Oh, Taco Man, you must have heard about this, right? 87% of... Yeah, yeah, I, and I want your thoughts on this real quick. 87% of the games released in America, you cannot get at all in any way, shape, or form. Isn't that insane? You know? That's the way, that's the way it is, man. It's just... Mm -hmm. how it is now disposable media i mean like and and then you know again a lot of people talk about all that wonderful digital stuff uh you know a lot of those games once they disappear you know they're gone forever you can't ever watch willow ever again <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah or or yeah. crater you know um oh yeah a lot a lot yeah a lot of lost media going on right there yeah. Oh, also, <laughs> so. yeah. So, so I want to talk to him, and he also has like original art for every year, which is really cool. You know, um, instead of just like screenshots, I, I'm pretty sure there was some legal thing there. Um, it, it's like really, really cool. I met the artist tonight. Cool guy. You know, he's on fire. There you go, I, NBA a, Jam. I, you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, I, you know, I gotta talk. You know, on the show, I gotta talk to Jordan. I'm like, yo, man, what, what about your boy here? Yeah, man? right. Didn't you do something for him before? For, yeah, I drew him something for the Comic Con. I drew him. Uh, what yeah. was it? Um, uh, was it the Black Manta? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. What so, about your boy, yo? Yeah, yeah. You, you had to give him some shit, man. <laughs> you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah so that so yeah we're gonna we're gonna kick that off with, with jordan um probably like an hour talk to him about his book and then you know i, I want to talk about game preservation because that that's a topic that's very important that people don't talk about like like you said you know because of the advent of digital yes digital is more convenient that's the way i consume my games but yes though that causes problems when it comes to game pre here's the mm -hmm. digital could be great for game preservation but it's not being utilized the way it should be, you know? But even then, even yep. if you theoretically had a place, like Steam is probably the closest we have to game preservation, but what if Valve goes out of business, right? Yeah, or 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 GOG. Like, you or know, GOG, yeah. been pretty decent for, for game that's preservation. What, yeah, that's what, uh, we've been talking about that for years, like literally like 30 years. Yeah. Like, you know, we were talking about disc rot for like Saturn games and PC Engine stuff and stuff like that, which that's literally like a probably like a a problem with maybe like fifteen percent of the games. It's not. I mean, it's not a rampant thing, but it does exist. Um, and then not to mention the companies themselves being very uh, lousy at keeping their uh, you know keeping their code. their sort their source codes or yeah. One, but the Sega, thing about, yeah, the Sega. You know, you know, talk about you know, you know, Square Enix. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. they have been, they've been notoriously. They literally had to redevelop all the the, the Kingdom Heart games. You know, because they didn't have the source code anymore. Right. So it's a lot. There's a lot of stuff that that is going that that needs to happen. And I mean, uh, you know, talking about game preservation, you know, at least Sony at least hired a guy to sort of like be a a game preservationist at their own company yeah. because they really need to keep keep track of that stuff because think about it they could literally 
they you know at this point at, at this juncture they could literally have a lot of their 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 well-known games on there but they don't you know no, it's um well i mean the thing about it is though if let's just say with like capcom so you've got marvel's uh, marvel superheroes the, the the combo pack that came out that was digital only uh they lost the light the, they had to pull the games off the, you know off the show off the stores because yeah. of licensing it. So now, if you don't have that game downloaded on your system, you cannot play it. P. And you think P. a lot of people think, "Hey, I bought this game digitally." No, you're ex- <laughs> you're like you're like a long term renting this game because once yeah. that service once that service down, it's it's over. It's yeah. done. You know, a lot of them will say, "Oh yeah, you can continue uh, yeah. to d- download um, a lot of your, your stuff over again." No, not everything. I mean, yeah, that, so the, the Ubisoft Ninja Turtles game was gone. Yeah. They yeah, did, they didn't remember uh, Scott, Scott Pilgrim. Pilgrim. Scott Pilgrim. Yep. Scott you know. Pilgrim. Yep. yep. Couldn't even yeah. do it. Hey, remember PT? Yep. Get PT. that anymore? Yep. No. Yep. That one's been scrubbed, and that was like a free yeah. game. So. Yep. Or free. Yeah. The yeah. um, uh, my friends at the Video Game History uh, Foundation in uh, Seattle, um, they've been doing. They've been trying to do a. Uh, they were trying to do game preservation for about. The past like five or six, well, maybe like eight, eight, like like eight years, and uh, there's a study that just came out that basically is like, like let's just say Yakuza, or Yakuza for for PS2. So unless you, even even though there's a remake, the remake didn't. I mean, we really don't count the remake because it's a remake. Yeah. Uh, if you want to play that original game, I mean, I luckily I have a copy. You have to go out and search for that game physically. And buy it. That's the only way you can get it. And if you don't bother to go that route, the game basically doesn't exist to you. And that's how it is with a lot of the classic games, a lot of the older games. Uh, yeah, there's you know you got the digital stores and you know like you know with the Switch having all like the like Super Nintendo stuff and stuff like that. Yeah, you have these you have all these options until they go away. And once they go away and they stop, you know. I mean, basically, it's like you either go out and spend hundreds of dollars to get these games, or you pirate them. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's the thing, man. It's and like, only- like we, here's the thing about pirating games, right? Like, I, I think I could speak for everyone where we say, where I, I'll say I don't condone it, but at the same time, if you can't get a game any other way, what choice do you have, right? I mean. I mean, you go, you know right? me. Yeah, I'm a sat. I've been, you know, I've been collecting since the '80s. You know, when my Saturn collection got stolen Man. years ago, I'm still trying to find those games, and those games have quadrupled in value. Mm-hmm. Sometimes even, you know, eight or nine times. Like, Bur- Bur- my favorite Saturn game is Burning Rangers. Rangers. Yeah, I bought that game for sixty dollars. If I go buy that game now, it's six. Hundred dollars, Jesus, bro. So, I just saw three. I saw three copies at a convention recently, and I'm like, yeah. I but I mean, I have a I have a way to play that game. Yeah, you know, not, not gonna get into how I can play it, but I can play it. But but at the same time, yeah. isn't it upsetting that that is the only way you could play it because Sega it's, isn't doing his due diligence by making sure these terrible. games are available to people? It's, you know, it's, it's bad. Terrible. Yeah, it's 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 not good, man. No, I mean, yeah. my thing is, like I've been saying this for years. I don't, I don't okay. I don't want a remake of the game. Yeah, you want just, the real game. Yeah, release the game as it is. Re-release it. So I'm limited. I mean, like you know, I have like I have friends at Limited Run and strictly li- and you know strictly limited games and super rare. And I know these guys, and I'm like, look, can you guys not go back and if you want to go back, let's go back. You're reprinting Game Boy Advance games and Game Boy games. Come on. Somebody has got a, you know, an old Saturn dev kit somewhere. There's there's hundreds, there's thousands of them out there. Somebody's got something where you can do this. You've got to be able to do it. I mean, I know people who. I mean, I know people by the re, like the repro market. That's why the repro market is still, you know, nobody can really mess with the repros because people are buying them because that's the only way they can get them. Yeah, they might have to mod their console or find a way to use a device to play the games, but. You know, you, you, if you want to play these old games, that's the only way you're going to do it. Because these companies are not going to be, you know, there's not, I mean, yeah, I wish I had the money to, I, 
make a game company where all I did was just reprint this stuff. Yeah. And mark, you know, just retail it. And, you know, just not, you know, I'm not trying to make $500 off the game. I want you guys to, dude, I want people to understand. I want people to play Burning Rangers. Yes. That game, there, there, game, there, was, e- there was an email mechanic in that game that has not been used in any other game before, since. There's, there's, so much, there's so much about that game that's just groundbreaking. And nobody has done anything like it since. And it's like, you have, I mean, this is a game, you, you should try it. You, you know, I don't care how you play it. Just find a way to play it. Um, but there's a ton, there's a thousands of games like that that have just been they've you can't find them and if you want to go and get them you got to have some deep pockets or yeah. you know you know you get on some website and download the ISO and blah 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 and you know I don't know the recipe but you know hey. um, but you just gotta but that's the thing that's and but you know, it's like you know eighty percent when it says I read the report report it's it was so disheartening. And I'm a I'm a classic I'm I'm a retro I re- collect everything I collect every any new games old games whatever, but I'm looking at that like you, there and I didn't even think about it like that. You are not gonna be able to play these games ever again. Yeah, let me let me read this right. A new study found that the vast majority of video games with a physical release in the U.S. are out of print, which leaves a significant amount of the medium's history in danger of being forgotten. Uh, the study was called a survey of the video game reissue market in the United States. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So um, out of over 4,000 titles surveyed, only 13% of the total games are still on the market in one way or another, whether through reissues digital re-releases hd remasters or retro collections the rest are out of print and unplayable without resorting to software piracy that's fucking crazy bro it's i didn't i didn't think of it that way i was like wow that is that's that's it's not exactly 100 percent that way but it's pretty close yeah i mean there are other ways to play games but i mean you know yeah it's it's sad yeah, I'm glad and we I brought was, this up. This story literally came out two days ago, but it got just buried under this. Yeah, FTC yeah, yeah. I read it. Um, my friend Kelsey works works for the the his the History Fields Foundation, and I she sent it to me, and I was like, I said I didn't even think of it this way. I've been collecting for years, and I'm like, wow. Yeah, it's, it's eye opening stuff, man. And you cannot. I mean, think about think about it. All the Dreamcast games, mm-hmm. and all those. It just Games that people who are playing games now have no idea what it was like. And it's like, you don't even, I mean. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, by the way, real quick, um, Jay Shop, he never heard of Burning Rangers. No, unfortunately, you can't, you, you can't legally Steam Deck it, you if you know what I mean. Legally. Yeah. yeah it's I mean, not, that's, one of, that's one of the games that's not available, so you have to find other mob, means. You have to sail the high seas. You know, mob hits. Yeah, VCDs were the shit back. Yeah, then. VCDs, man. I remember that. You know, yeah, it's, no. <laughs> it, it's still funny. Out, and I'm speaking for the older guys here. We're like, you know, obviously the Dreamcast is like a legendary classic console, but to me, that's still like like a new console. <laughs> you know, compared to like you I, know Super Nintendo and the shit we grew up with. You know, I mean, it's just. I mean, lo- I mean, like you know, Nintendo and Sega. Some of the you know they bring out these classic consoles. I mean, and that's cool. I mean, if that, yeah, I mean, in some but, cases, I mean, my thing is, if you get them, if you get a chance to get one of these consoles, just, just get it because like, like the turbo, like the turbo graphics, mini, the yeah. PC engine, mini, good luck finding one of those. Now I think that, that it's funny because that thing was, didn't do so well at all. Now that thing is worth so much money. Oh, the, the original dude, dude, that's why I'm well, I mean, not, well, not the, the, the original, well, the original the mini. and, and the mini. Yeah. The mini. Yeah. The mini is it was ninety nine dollars now it's like four hundred. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. But I mean, it's just yeah, it's it's sad. It's really sad that you. I mean, that piracy is the is the only way you're gonna play some of these games. I mean, you know, like I said, a lot of stuff's very easy to do it. It's very easy to do it. But I mean, it's just a lot of you're gonna miss. You're gonna miss like that's like seven generations of games. Yeah just gone unless you know somebody who's got them and you know you can go play them or whatever but i don't know what these companies i mean it kind of makes you look at it like you know if they don't come up with something to keep these 
games. I mean, like I said, I, I'm a physical guy. I mean, I give you digital games a, a lot of times. We get a we get a lot of review codes, so I have a lot of digital games for every system. So, um, but once these once these servers are gone, and once these digital servers go by the wayside, that's it. And, and you're gonna yeah. have to keep you got to keep a console loaded with games in order to keep them and and play them. And, and the problem is these companies don't have. Um, financial incentive to resurrect these games, you know, because a lot of them won't sell. Let's just be honest. A lot of them won't sell, Um, you know. So it's like even though it would be for the benefit of the entire industry, they're not thinking that long term. They're thinking about how much money can I make now, you you know. You know what? You know what video games need? They need the Criterion Collection. (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) Literally, literally the Criterion Collection of gaming. In other words, a company that gets the gets their hands on these games, they do all the work to preserve everything, get everything looking nice and sexy. You know, they license the game and they put it out. I would, you know, I would be amazing. Yeah, I would be. I would be down to do that. I would take on that task. I would definitely think. And you know what's funny, and Manny, I'm glad you brought brought that up because I I was unaware that there are actually a lot of other companies that are you know do the same thing Criterion does, right? So we have all these companies doing that for movies. We don't. Who do we have? Limited run games. You know, yeah, it's like it's yeah, slim, yeah, slim pickings here. There, you know, there 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 yeah, there's um there's limited run games, and then there's a, a um an English branch that also does it. It has a very similar sounding name to limited run games. Yeah. Like, and there's yeah. only a few in Japan is super giant games. Super uh, giant is it super giant games? No, no, that's super. not super giant games. That's a that's an actual studio, isn't it? Yeah, I thought that was a studio. But uh, but 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 regardless, the point stands that there aren't exactly a lot of companies doing this stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, I know you're that that you know what I'm saying? Um it's it's upsetting, man. Um anyway, I, I think that that'll uh do it for us for the night. Uh, good show. Um, hopefully, we won't have to talk about this FTC shit again. Uh, we probably, you know, but obviously, if you want to ask us any stuff about it on for the Sunday show, please feel free to. We're never going to inhibit you guys from the questions you could ask us. You know, um, video game questions. Keep the AMA stuff for. We'll probably do an AMA, AMA special during the summer because we got episode four fifty coming. You know, and I think it's time for a giveaway too. You know, give some games out. Yeah, man. We maybe we should be giving away a Spider Man or something. To, to be honest, man. We have enough money and you know reserve thanks to you guys giving us bits we could probably buy a console this year i think we probably buy a console you know by the end of the year or something let's do that let's buy him a console let's get him a playstation because you guys love playstation <laughs> you know um i, I just want to find a way of doing it because i i because the thing the way we've done it before and the way most people do co- you know contests is like subscribe you know and, and then like you know to win the console but the problem is you get a bunch of people that subscribe and then they don't come back, you know. So we, we'll we'll figure something out, something for the real fans. But it's time for, it's time to do a big giveaway, you know. It's time. Um, Andre, man, I want to thank you for being on. You know, as always, it's been a while, but you know, every time you you know you're here, you you um you enlighten us with all your your knowledge, man. So it's always an honor, not only to have man. you on the show, but just in general, it's an honor to to call you a friend, you know. Man, the honor is mine, dude. I mean, you guys, I, I salute you guys so much. You just have no idea. You guys are keeping, you know, I, I'm not going to, I don't want to be that dude, but you're keeping black game journalism alive. Thank Sorry. you. Thank you for saying that, man. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. You know, um, <laughs> well, just, well, yeah, no, well, I'm actually glad you brought that up because that's what's cool about this book. You know, it's a lot of different hues here, if you know what I mean. You know, right. L- lots of different perspectives. So it- it's good to keep that going. Like, I, like, I still believe, you know, your, your merit is what ultimately counts. But at the same time, you kind of want, you know, your own people represented, too, you know. So we try to do that, but we do it the way it should be done We're, by just being here existing, you know, because there are a lot of other people that just talk about it all the time. Like, you don't need to talk about it. Just be there. Just be there. You know, because right. people will see that. People go, oh, shit, the, that guy's the, Dominican, the fact, that guy's Puerto Rican, that guy's black. Cool, the, you know? The fact the fact that you're in the room standing there with everybody else, that's already yep. the symbology. You don't, need, you don't need to draw a giant arrow on yourself because you just being there is the arrow. You know? Yeah, that is the arrow. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, yeah, Andre, man, th- thank you so much, man. It, it's awesome. But uh, please, oh, where can people find you? And if you want to plug anything, uh, the stage is yours, man. 
Yeah, the site is now, the site is, uh, it was Real Taco Gamer. Uh, we had an issue with um, our site. Uh, we had a big malware issue and we couldn't, we couldn't save everything. So we was rebranded. Uh, the site is now the Otaku Authority. Oh, nice. So we're starting a new podcast soon. We got the, still, the ROG cast is still around. We're on every, every streaming platform uh we got some new episodes coming up soon uh my new show my new interview show is coming out uh, i think it's september uh that's where nice. i go out and i call in all the favors from all the people way back in the day and we're going to talk to everybody about it about some of the craziest stuff that's happened in the game industry uh over the years it's you uh, got, you yo you've been, get, you've been you talking get, about this for a while too man yeah, dude, man. yeah it's been it's been a labor of love and i've just been trying to get the logistics right and yeah, it's it's funny. It's, it's are you gonna crazy. get are you gonna get Torrance on there? I know. Oh yeah. Oh <laughs> man, Torrance, Torrance. Yeah, that's my that, man. We we go so far back it's crazy, and we didn't we didn't even know we went back that far. That's crazy. <laughs> right. I, I remember that story. Yeah, yeah. It's fucking dope, man. man I yeah, it, man. Everybody just keep playing, and just this video games were created to have were created to have fun. So have fun. That's gotcha. it. That's what it's about. And obviously, uh, Rich, I want to thank you for being on again. A, a special request. Hope Jay Shep was happy to have you on. You know, um, always enjoy your insight. And, you know, again, Rich, you guys don't know, man. Like, we talk literally every single day. It's like that, you know. But, yeah, Rich, go, go ahead. Say your piece, man. Again, thank you for being on, man. This is always fun having yes. you on. Yes, sir. Always have a lot of fun being on. Having a great discussion. Shout out to everybody that checked out the show. And uh, yeah, shout out to you guys and shout out to uh, Andre. Um, yeah. Yeah, Stay tuned. Yeah. There's a lot of things in the works. Oh, I like I like the sound of that. Yeah, no, you, you guys don't understand, man. It's like, like Andre taught me and Rich so much. You know what I'm saying? So always grateful for this man. I appreciate you guys. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> All right, people. So, um, oh, Carlos, uh, Walking Dead. What's going on with that? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, I Am Negan is a show that uh, Adam, myself, and Rich do. Um, we'll see. I don't know if Adam will want to be on that show. Right, but you don't want to talk about the FTC. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, but uh, yeah, we, we talk about The Walking Dead, anything, whether it's uh, The Walking Dead proper, which ended, or... Fear the Walking Dead, any of the spinoffs. We're currently talking about Dead City, which is the Maggie and Negan show. You know, our namesake, I am Negan. Uh, and yeah, we're talking about uh, the show every week. We record a podcast on the Coalition YouTube channel. That's the Coalition with a K or the Coalition.com or any podcast uh, app out there where you can just search I am Negan and you'll be able to uh, find it. And yeah, this week, uh, this Sunday, we'll be posting our our new episode on episode five. This is a seven episode, um, I guess like a mini, mini six. series. For, yeah. Six episodes. So episode five is going to be this weekend. The penultimate episode. Things are getting crazy. We'll see what happens. Oh. There hasn't been any nukes yet. So a uh, little disappointed, but uh, I know this is Rich's favorite show of all time. I think he's saying, well, well, first and foremost, I have to interrupt you there, Carlos. Uh, it's not my favorite show, but I will say this. If you do watch the podcast, you're gonna want to watch the next episode because there's gonna be a lot of spicy stuff said Whoa. in that uh, <laughs> controversial <discussion>. things. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Oh man, uh, you know you guys can look forward to that. So make sure to check check out I am Negan on the Coalition dot com, Coalition YouTube, or just search it on your uh, podcasting apps. Yeah, there you go, man. All right, people, we're done here. So make sure you follow Throwdown on Twitch and Twitter. Join the Discord where. The conversations and the rumors are always popping and when things get spicy sometimes as well. Uh, you could also find uh, Throwdown on any podcast app by searching for Throwdown Show. That's two words, Throwdown Show. Throwdownshow.com to listen to past episodes. And if you've been watching us on YouTube and enjoyed our videos, make sure you hit like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified of when our premieres go live. And also stay tuned for Throwdown interviews that will be going up before the month ends. So it's going to be very, very cool. That's going to be a YouTube exclusive when it comes to video. Obviously, we're going to do the, the, the 
mp3 version but that's going to be a youtube exclusive so that's going to be kind of fun um and yeah for everything else just uh check out the links below man uh once again i was your host tony polanco and tonight i was joined by emilio lopez see you next time chris seeley hey take care everyone carlos romero happy bastille day <laughs> uh brett murdoch take it easy people richard bailey jr have a good weekend everybody and mr andre tipton play what you enjoy have fun <laughs> there you go people all right we'll see you on sunday man later peace laters